All right, everybody, I made a mistake with recording, and my microphone didn't really work, so I'm just going to do some audio. This is a pretty cool. I didn't know the camera moved like that. I actually find it pretty cool. So right here, we're going to attack the independent forces, and... Huh. You're about to break peace. Declare war anyway. You just broke a peace treaty. You can attack on your former friend this turn. That sucks. So I have to wait an entire turn before I actually attack. So I just tell my armies, you sit here, you camp out, so you don't get the reminder, camp out. And finally we camp out, yep, same reminder, next turn. Just broke a peace treaty, cool. You declare war and avenge in three, let's check out what we can research. Um, produce ironclad warship or sidearms. Oh, we are being attacked by that city? Well, there's six of them, so we better not auto combat it. Let's just attack. So when I get in here, I notice that the foliage is a little weird. I don't really like the jungle style on Age of, Age of Wonders, but that's just my personal opinion. So we take a look at the battlefield. I have my army split up into two. I have my southern army, which is pretty much four musketeers and a hero. Oh, I lied. Three musketeers, hero, and prospectors. Um, for this match, there's really only three avenues that you can attack. The one where I'm moving my musketeers now, or my hero just moved in. You can attack up through there. And you can also actually move your troops. If you look back a little bit, I right-click and I push it to the right, you will actually face your troops wherever you want to go. It's a nifty little trick. Here we just move the Dwarf Axemen up into the hole so nothing can get by. Put them in defense mode, it's good to go. Priests move up, and the uh, Musketeers seem to move up. You have a 50 range penalty, or a 50 75. So I just choose to fire the musket at the closest man. Moves my guy up. Boom, the disciplined. And I use stoning. Because flashbang does fire damage. I check flashbang and I realize each of them has like 100% fire protection, 60, 20. It's not going to do as well as I thought. So we go to stoning, which does 18 to 28. Perfect amount. So I check the priest and see if I can kill them the next turn and... It only does 3 to 4 damage, so I move on to the Musketeers, and keep bringing everyone closer. The Raptors aren't really necessary, but I had to do something with them. So I just end my turn without even attacking with the Priests. These guys give them Dragon Ancestry, so I check and see what that really is. And plus 45 protection first strike. Um... Yeah, they do a little firebomb on me. I didn't really see it because I was messing around in the settings, but those little things do quite damage and hate. The axemen get hit, but axemen are tanks. Charge seal. Look, they did 17 back and it took 6 damage. Here we just rush with the axemen doing 13 and 19, which does 16, and they only took 3 in retaliation. That is hard. Horrible. So we attack with my raptors, which get a charge bonus, knocking them out in one hit. Here we move up the axe, not axemen, forge priests. Didn't really click. Here I heal my axemen because I did it once per turn. No, not once per turn, that's a lie. Once per combat. Here we take. Musketeers are so freaking strong. Like the fire muskets, they take they have one turn cooldown, but 26 to 38 is fantastic. See, here I attack melee because I wanted to save my musket, which I didn't really remember they had first strike, so that hurt. <laughs> that hurt quite a bit. See, here I contemplate attack which one to attack, and I try to go for the one shot. I got a huge malice for some reason. But, hey, level up. 
He's a veteran now, or elite, so he gets armor piercing. This hero, Benham. I, I don't know why, I just love his name. Uh, the prospectors I move up, and I know they're just... I even said in the original game, I'm just like, well, these are kind of pointless to even move them up there. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I did it anyway. So, and the turn. Again. Three shots of fire from this man. Musketeers are pretty strong. See? It's a firebomb, firebomb, and that's that. This is, I'm pretty sure this will be the last turn. Does he actually do 18 a pop and only get three in retaliation, which is amazing. Here I just kill them, 32 shots. Bring up these forge priests, which it doesn't matter. They shoot fire damage, so they don't actually do much. So, take the charge. Take the retaliation. And then I... What do I do? Do I attack him? I think this kills him. No. It only did 12. I thought it was, because I was like, oh, 9 times 2. 18. It's, he's dead. But for some reason, he's getting super malice, so... And the musketeer fence on the mall. Boom! I love musketeers. They're awesome. Alrighty. So here I noticed that I lost the prospector, which... Eh, it's a prospector. Whatever. And select skill to research. We go with the produced ironclad. Which says seven turns. But I'm not quite sure it actually took seven. I think it took less. Yep, ironclad. Move them in, and we migrate the city. Because we do not want anything but dwarves this game. Only dwarves. Maybe the next game I'll have like a mixture of everything, but... Here, dwarves are the master race. Oh, just moving on. Yes! Alignment slightly changed the game. So I produce my first warship, and I tell it to produce a galleon. See, I, I try to decide between the frigate and the galleon, but it's whatever. Ah, public bath, but my happiness isn't too bad, so I decide against that. And then we look at stone walls or the war hall, but because I want to pull the first form, but I decide not to. So cannons are coming after fire, fire. I can't remember what they call them. The fire tanks, but whatever. So we'll put boat on fleet, and we keep ending the turn. Here we decide to take boom across the river and go and get a new island. So this is a normal start. I wanted research. I was going to do bitter hall research, but I decided not to. So we did observatory, builder hall, and then I noticed these boats came and I'm like well I guess I didn't notice that I went over here and decided to produce a settler whenever I get the money <sighs> well I figured to go check out and see what that fire shrine is because it looks so cool see got an achievement seaworthy first time I've been on the water and I thought you could just go embark then move but yeah that barking takes all your movement, but debarking does not. I don't understand. I guess I understand why, but I feel like debarking should take this much. <clears throat> so here I take my first sea battle. And the, whoever is defending always moves first. Alright, so I just go from left to right. And I thought I would have a cannon to shoot both of those, but I don't. And the Wraith Kings have physical protection. I just, I hate physical protection. It just negates it so much. <laughs> I mess with my camera for no reason. Just mess around with it. Oh, no, no. I was looking at the... <laughs> Each one of these only has one little man on their boat. See, that boat just got one shot. It had like eight health. See, these muskets, one little man, one little man, one little man. And the hero, he's got his mountain all on there. I thought that was hilarious. 
Excuse me. So I try to decide which one would do better. And neither of them really worked, so we went with the times two, four to six. Poke! <laughs> oh, I love these pokes. So we won that, and I just tell him to go hide back in that city. It's a cool looking city. So the furnace is done, blast furnace, so we can produce cans whenever we want. Um, I'm pretty sure here we get a galleon warship. Yeah. That or Master's Guild. Yep, Master's Guild it was. But I didn't really have the money for it, so I was like, well, produce that, and let's get some merchandise going on. So we push M here, and it moves our troops on over, and we end our turn. There's me messing with the camera again. Time to attack! I was going to do auto combat, but I decided not to. I wanted to see what this shrine was all about. Mm. So, here we are. Move back forward. Shroom, one four. See, fireball's pretty cool, but it, that wouldn't pop up for some reason. Great emulation. Sustains a ritual of flames burning everything in honor of the fire gun emulates a random unit each combat round so you know my hero gets emulation so I didn't really if you really want to do it I kept it on there long enough so musketeers are on full blast 25 37 20 and he does 57 I guess the yellow one was like a critical hit maybe not quite sure but monster slayer is pretty cool Monster Slayer straight shot. Bam. 50. One shot kills. I don't understand it. It just happened, so I'm like, cool. And this guy gets one shot as well. 39. Eight. Every one of those did more. It's quite amazing how these musketeers and really just the fire rifle works. It's so strong. So here I decide to go and just clear up a few nodes. I'm trying to decide if I want to like settle here or settle on the other island, the my original one. For some reason I'm back to neutral. I killed a unit dedicated to evil. I mean, whoops! I just had to. <laughs> so I just I move on. I go for the mana node instead of the other one. And I decide to see what's going on with this eel. Cool. I wish you could recruit him. I don't know what class you use to recruit him, but it's cool. Recharging mana current. Mana currents fuse themselves with supernatural beings. Replenishing. It just replenishes the health. Every, a random person gets replenished health after every turn. So, these things have protections, and I guess I didn't want to move closer. So did 14, and he's up to silver rank. Six to eight. So I just try to go for a little flank move. Move the dwarf priest. Dwarf forge priest. Rage penalties, but who cares? Still does five. Move musketeers up, and I think this kills him. No, it's not killing. Nowhere close. That did eight. Axemen can't move close enough, so we just move him there. Put him in defense mode, and hopefully someone walks by. This kills him. Can't reach target. Shoot him with the rifle. Oh, 14. Max damage. And control enter. And you end your turn. So the eel just comes in and just... Whoosh, attacks my musketeers. From here I take a charge flank. Oof, a little bit of retaliation, but that's okay. Trying to decide what would be the better move here. Go there so I get out of the line of sight penalty. 
eight, ten. What do we got? Ten, eighteen. I I didn't see the last one. I don't know. <laughs> Still didn't see a lot. He shot three times and only saw two come up. But whatever. Moving musketeers here for the kill. And this is why you keep different type of items. Shoot them three times with a blow dart instead of once with a crossbow. Boom. One shot kill. And for the final kill, we take our axemen, who are tanks. I love these axemen. And that's how you beat an eel with a few Phastasm warriors. So we got the mana node. We can keep on moving. We're just pretty much clearing this island. Ooh, Ironclad will see. That was not seven turns. So mana fuel factory. Man, machine unit cost minus 10% gold. That's pretty cool. But we just go for the flame. It's at six turns. We'll see what happens. No mercy. But only the raptors took a hit. Got 55 gold. I'm like, that would be a good place for a city. Oh, here's one right here. Well, I know where I'm going. So I beeline straight for the city. End my turn. Ah. See, I didn't notice it when I was playing, but the dwarf from flame cannon went from six to four. So I'll come here and I try to figure out what I want to do. And I'm like, well, everybody needs research. Oh, I'm attacked by one little expert. Okay. And he's dead. Back to what I was doing. Well, this will probably be my support place. The happiness is good, so I don't need the hospital. Siege workshop for the extra hammers is always good, or stone walls for defense, but we'll go with the temple for the extra mana and the additional rank for my forge priests. I'm sure there's another thing around, but... See, I think about going over here. If I plant one right there, I could get both tombs and that farm but other than that there's really nothing can't really go around there so should I have four on this island or just three one two three four or I could come over here plant one to get the hammer hammer yeah we're just gonna move that over there see what happens um attack let's go we're going to take this city. Next turn we'll take this city. And we're going to move this guy over here so we can clear up some room for that settler so he's not all the way there. Move her into the city. Make a merchandise. And I believe we switch over to the ironclad warship, which drops our gold per turn from 143 to 108. That's what I was worried about. I like how it has a plus fire range for it. That's pretty cool. Hero offers a join. I don't even look at it anymore. I just keep on moving. <sighs> Going through the volcano. And I was like, oh, is he a draconian? Yes, he is. So I was going to move the set over there, but it would have been better to go there. So I actually had to move him there and bring him over. See, now he has no movement. I don't, I don't like that. So we camp her in there, and we attack the city. Very likely victory, but... I don't know. Let's just do it anyway. I had about five minutes left of the video, so... Yep. So, here's the video. Not the video. Here's the siege. Hmm... I'm like, can I actually attack these walls? I'm not quite sure if I can. Maybe the fire could attack the walls, but no. <laughs> so we send the musketeers up. See, just be cannon fodder if they had any cannons. They don't, they don't have anything. So everything just moves up. Axemen, raptors, everything. So we check our magic, and we see flashbang. Or stony. Nope, we went straight for stony. 1828 and that was higher than the other one because I think it was 16 to 26 see that does 24 damage and we enter 
everybody went into guard mode. Except for the game. Throw stones. God, I don't like crossing. Prospectors. Send the Forge Priest up. He gets one shot. Minus 100% malice. How that does too, I do not know. So we send the Raptors up to attack the gates. Oh, every time I hear that sound, I believe it's because they're low morale. But I, I don't know what it means. I guess not. So we go here, kill him. Oops. Moving everyone up. This guy actually comes out. He has pole arm, which is bad with the cavalry, but. I think I'll just tell him to attack. Oh, that's what I did. So you can shoot through, like, right behind your own guy, or right behind, like, a wall or something. You don't have the line of sight penalty. I don't. I guess it just ignores the person directly in front of you on the next hex, but I'm not sure. So we camp here, city awaits fate, and it's already a dwarf. So we just absorb. Absorb the population. Yes. Yeah, he'll level up. Let's see what we want. I really kind of want Wizard Hunter. I don't understand how we don't have tunneling as a dwarf, but okay. Repair machines, pool, firebomb low. But bestow iron heart restores 15 health to target friendly unit. Plus, you get strong will until end of combat. Always good to heal your units, so I grab that. Always want a medic. Hero joins, no. I produce an ironclad, and I go ahead and produce another one. Get the little navy going, you know. So I can go and clear this pirate platoon. Here, I just mop up. Those tier 1 draconians have no effect against these musketeers. So, I'm thinking about where to settle. I kind of want that in compass, but I don't know if it actually provides anything. Because I guess it has to be in your line of sight before you can see it. So I just move the settler down, try to see if I can get to it. Move 1, move 2, and it provides plus 10. Research. Everyone loves research. And bestows visiting units with 40% fire protection and explosive death for the next combat. But whatever. So next turn we try to figure out where would be a good place to have the city. Would it encompass everything? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My main throne city is pretty big. It has all that all the way around there. So I assume it would be good. We'll find out. Um, here, we don't really know what to produce. Great Temple doesn't really, plus 10 mana, plus 100 stored mana. I actually have low mana, so maybe that's what I need. But, I decided to just produce a bunch of merchandise and come back to it later. Everybody needs money. Same thing here, I just, just give me money. Money, 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 money. Uh, just go and clear out a few things, little horses. Little horses died. And I got a boar. Hey, hey. Uh huh. Here I think about going to take out the ancient tomb. Take a stronghold. Founded the city of Burender. So I'll have two cities on this island. I don't think I'll make another one. I decided to make sidearms, and I was like, "Oh, I'll read it for you." Pistols are added to the loadout of cavalry units. Cavalry units gain the fire pistol ability, which is pretty much half of fire rifle. So the rifle does 30, fire pistol does 16. It's pretty much it. So we go builder's hall, storehouse, observatory, pretty standard build. And here, flame tank is done. So we make two of those, and then we want to build the industrial plant to get ready for. Do I want the industrial plant? What do I want? Oh, I picked the arena and public baths. Hmm. Oh well, I guess Juggernauts are down the road a little bit. We do the wooden wall, builder's hall, storehouse, laboratory, standard procedure. Standard operating procedure. Here we go after the watchtower because I forgot about the tomb. Boom, got it. So I'm like, alright, we'll go back here. Oh, that'll be for next video. Sorry. 
So here we just get some distance between us and these little things. Baby Reed Serpent. Evolve. Reed Serpent. Tier 4 monster. See, I want one of these. How do you capture a baby Reed Serpent? That would be a cool creature to use. Maybe if you're like the Arch Druid or something. I don't know. So that's done. And we will see everybody next time. If you like it, push like. If not, don't worry about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.